Everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and it is a Shabbat. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We thank you very, very much for listening to the word of our creator that we're about to get into. And we hope you are having a wonderful day. <clears throat> let us get into our beginning of this and let us see where our this is our new little tablet, and hopefully it's it's sprucy enough for all of us here. And so we're gonna begin with uh, what Emissary of Elohim was talking about there in the chat room which is the Shema. And the Shema is out of Deuteronomy 6. And for those who do not know who Yisrael is, if this is your very first time, 
listening to this or even understanding this, Yisrael could be you. Yisrael could be the walk that you walk in this world. But you are not Yisrael if you have abandoned the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. You will never be called Yisrael if you have hung the laws of our Creator on a tree and you have a, you, all you have is, is a, a Messiah who you claim is once saved, always saved, and you don't have to follow what our Messiah says to do. Our Messiah followed the Torah. The Torah is found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And in those books is where you will find the way of our creator, the way of his wanting us to behave, the ways that we are supposed to eat, the ways we're supposed to live, the ways we're supposed to worship, all of that. And this is the Shema. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and upon the gates. Okay, all right, everyone. Chat room, if you will get on the mic here, I'd appreciate it. All right, so we have Tess, we have Cindy LJ, we yep. have, hold on, I was like late to get into this, so there's a whole bunch of chats going on before we got here. I know that Glenn's here, hey. Grand is here. All oh, right, we got Grand. Elohim, Rhiannon and Zachariah. Uh, we also have Chris with Bobby Zines. Bobby Z. Bobby Z's in the house. Um, Much love to all of y'all. Drag is here. I think I got everybody. Well, greetings to everybody in there. Um, this is amazing. Uh, what did Rhiannon say? This is my mom, second time. Listen, oh, she's Rhiannon's mom is here. I don't know what her mom's name is, but um, hello, Rhiannon's mom. Much love to you, dear sis, and to all the Slager family and to everybody out there. We have a, just a huge love to everybody, and um, we thank you guys for, for joining in. What we do every Shabbat is we go through these, what they, what the people believe is a, as a taboo, the the laws, statutes, and commandments. Which, for most people, if you go ask them if they keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, they'll tell you what is that. They they have no idea. And so, these are the laws, statutes, and commandments that we are told to obey and to bring to our life, not once, not twice, but from the beginning of Genesis to the very end of Revelations. It talks about us binding these laws into our life and making us making our lives ba based upon them, right? We would not want to go into this world unless we have the Torah as our guideline, as a litmus test for everything we're about to do, because we can get into a lot of trouble in this world if we do not have the Torah. And so this is the Torah of our creator. These are the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator in the best order that we can get them. And they, we truly believe that they apply to every single person in this world. Well, anybody who wants to be a child of the Most High. Now, if your goal is to be the child of Hasatan, then I guess these aren't laws are not for you and you're right where you need to be. But for those who are seeking the kingdom and the way forward, these are really, really good things. So I will begin and we will do the round table of the laws of our creator. Number one, be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it, have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The herb in every tree is for food. What do you- I forgot to pray. Oh, I forgot to pray. Actually, we did forget to pray. Kate, let's do that real quick. Uh, Miss Nicole got broke us into this. Let us open in prayer. Sorry, everybody. Let's do this real quick. Say, Father, I think for this day, I ask that your Ruach is amongst us, I ask that this family that we have here is blessed that everything that you want us to speak comes out of our mouths and that we are taking away something from this weekend, from this, from this Shabbat. I ask that it is blessed and that your will is throughout this entire family here, that your your son is exalted, that your name may be praised in all things that we do. In Yahshua's name, Shalom. All right. Beautiful. Yep. Sorry, guys. We are a little bit out of sync on that, so we Sorry. will get us back here. It's a good thing I have Miss Nicole here to keep me in line. Okay. Okay. Um, now let's go let's do this again let's start over again let's start with these and be fruitful wait have you made over the fish fowl and everything creature the herb buried in every tree is food men and women should build their own families master sin every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you do not eat the blood walk before me and be perfect good you who is covenant laws statutes and commandments every male shall be circumcised eight days old all right eli we talking to mike you, you sound like you're kind of like you're talking to 
Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Bread, Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrim. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. Let's go back to this real quick because we always end up with new people in here and I want to talk about commandment number 17 where it says there is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrim. This is why religions of this world are useless. That is why we have 65,000 different denominations of useless religions and every single one of them teach contrary to the words and the laws and the, the commandments of our creator. Now, if you want to be a child of the most high, it has nothing to do with a 501c3 Sunday worshiping church or going to a church. It means that if you want to be a child of the most high, you have a set of guidelines. Now, a lot of people will say, well, these guidelines are for the old people. They're for the old Jews. That was a long time ago. None of this stuff applies to us today. Well, this commandment right here says these commandments absolutely do apply to us today. And if you want to have that kingdom road, if you want to get out of this evil world that we are in, the only way that is possible is with this kingdom path. It is with the laws, statutes, and commands. And so this commandment that says there's one Torah for the stranger, and you, you can define Torah as the way forward. If, you, if you're looking for what the definition of the Torah is, it's the way forward. And so if you're looking for the way forward, you, the only place you will find it is in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That is our baseline. That is our guideline for life. And so if we don't reject this, our lives will be blessed. If we reject this, unfortunately, it says it comes with curses. Okay. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Bring, do not bring Yahuwah's name, do not. Keep the Sabbath. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahuwah's laws for criminals. Do not lie to the beast. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge, charge your brother interest. If you buy your neighbor's raiment, return to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress the stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan name. Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger of Yahuwah for you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use anointing oil on a normal person. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you are, you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie, be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they're due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattooed. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, the Elmer Count. Keep the feast of trumpet, Yom Teruah. Keep the feast of his coat, Shem Niat If you blaspheme in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Pay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess all your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah being a Nazir. What is easy on the four corners of your garment? Laws of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Do remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Leave Yahuwah. Swear by his name. And destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. 
Rejoice in all you who has blessed you with. Do not do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithes your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart or shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Prophet tested Deuteronomy. Do not move your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. Your brother's cattle or clothes are lost. You find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and firstborn, and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the feet of Sukkot. Okay. And so that is it for those who have never heard what the Torah is. You just got a brief uh, rundown of exactly what it is. And um, if you can see from this list, there's actually nothing that is um, really hard. There's nothing that's hard at all. In fact, it's super easy when you're um, when you look at this in context. But, you know, the, the world has put uh, tons of them. In fact, you have the Jews and the Jews will say there's like 613 laws. They have like 200 laws just for the Shabbat. And every one of those things are adding to and taking away from the Torah because none of that stuff is in the Torah. And so, all right, let us get into our reading for the day. And let's see, where are we Hold at? Hold on, before you start that, right. Tess has a yes, question. We've ahead. discussed this before, but we will discuss it again. I don't wear men's clothes, but should I not be wearing pants? So this, this, is, the, this is the thing. If you, are, if you are attempting to make yourself look like a male or a male is attempting to make himself look like a female, for that endeavor, right? That is where you, you, we're going wrong. And that is where we don't want to go wrong. Now, most people, like, like my wife wears pants around here as well. We have 10 pit bulls. If she did not, if she's wearing a dress, she'd probably end up in the emergency room probably twice a day um, because the dogs will go blowing by and in a dress, she's gonna end up on her head. There are, the, the point of this entire thing is that if you are a man and you're, you're chicking yourself up to look like a girl, that's wrong. Or if you are a female and you, you, you feel a little testosterone up and you want to act like a male and you start dressing like a male, that is where this is wrong. And that's where I think it is wrong. And I don't have any other advice for this other than, you know, I don't think it was meant that there are certain a lot of circumstances where women will want to wear pants and things of that nature. It will, it will not be feasible if you're out in a dress or, or something of that sort. <clears throat> Anyone else around this have anything else? Um, Anyone in the chat room have this? Any questions uh, on this? I, I I think there's special pants made for women, right? And there's pants made for men. So I think is that true? Yes. I mean, what? There's pants that are cut for women, and there are pants that are cut for men. Men's pants are bigger. They don't. Right, they and I, I, the whole point of this whole thing is that it, you're attempting to change the nature of man and woman is, is what this point is, and that's where we're, I I don't think it's I don't think it's a sin. I don't think it's bad. Unless, Miss Tess, you're trying to act like a guy or you want to be a guy, which I don't think you are. So that would be the only thing that I could see of. And maybe someone in the chat will have some other uh, stuff on this, but that, that's just my viewpoint. And that, my viewpoint isn't doctrine at all. It's just simply in, in my own opinion. Okay. Hold well, on. Uh, the Grand has one more. Ah, the Grand. How many second born receive the double portion? Ooh. I don't know. I mean, what are we talking is it, about? Is it, is it, is it the first born dies? Yeah. yeah. How many second born received the double portion? Well, the first born would probably have to die I for mean, that. I mean, Yaakov took it. Yeah, well, Yaakov took it out of the... Uh, Manasseh took it. Manasseh. Um, Manasseh. Yeah, I don't know. Manasseh. Manasseh. We don't have a ton of people doing it, but there's reasons that they ended up taking it and having that. Is that the question? Do we even do that right? Or is that... I don't know if I that answered. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, keep your questions coming. We will break. This is all part of this whole thing. We love to, to hear from you guys. We love to discuss this stuff with you guys. This is why we're, we're hanging out with y'all. And before you start, there's a few more people that came in, so we need to say hello. To all them. right. Say hello. We have Sylvia. Hi. We have Don T. Johnson. Uh, living and... Uh, living man, not a name? 
Just living. Oh, living. Oh, and I know. Genie, not of this world as well. And I think I got everybody new that came in. Yeah, it's interesting. So she was talking about last week she went to, uh, this will disappear, I think, before I can read it. Um, let me bring you some men's shoes. I said, no, thank you. I want some women's. And what was the last part of that? It disappeared. Okay, it says, we were in a mall last week and at the shoe store, the lady said, here, let me bring you some men's shoes. And I said, no, thank you. I only want women's because they are made for men. And I told her, no, please. Yeah, you know, and that is, you know, it is a very curious time that we are alive in this world. And, you know, that command of, of not... You know, women not becoming men and men not becoming women. I don't know if it's just because we're at the end of the age where everything is so corrupted and everything is so ridiculous. But, I mean, you can you can see the people. I mean, even, um, what is that, that Satanist company, Anheuser-Busch, the beer company, right? They started putting a, a dude, uh, I guess a dude, on a, on a, a beer can and things. And I guess it, it didn't work out for them. But it is a it is a tragedy where we are trying to flaunt this around. And it is, it is I don't know if, how sick our, our world is going to get, but it's getting really, really sick. And um, the division between men and women, and, you know, the, they, they've been trying to, to destroy marriages and the, the, the family in America and in the world pretty much for uh, ever since I've been around. And it's, it's getting there, right? It is, it is very much getting there. It is very odd and very rare these days that there is a family Right, you don't really see a man, a woman, a couple of kids, and everyone's real happy. So, if you have a family, you are in the minority of this, and you know the families are just getting really weird. And you know our creators gave us guidelines for this. And if we went out and we picked up rocks and chucked them at every dude that went out and put on a dress, we wouldn't be in the situation right now. And so, unfortunately, we we uh, we are in the situation. All right, let's get on with this. And we are in Genesis 33. Um, I'm going to take the chat off. Mr. Cole will be on the chat there. So keep keep the chats going, everyone. Uh, again, we'd love to hear from you, and Mr. Cole will break in on anything interesting. Okay, here we go. Everyone ready? Yep. Sure. All right. And Jacob lifted his eyes and looked and saw Esau coming, and with him four hundred men. And he divided, or and he divided the children among Leah and Rachel, and the two servants. And he put the two, the female servants and their children in front, and Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. And he himself passed over that before them, and he bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Now, is it just me, or have I read the story about 500 times, and it seems like we read this last week? See, the yeah. problem is, guys, we're, we're, we're actually translating. They're not translating. We're editing scriptures. And so between the book of Jasher, Jubilees, and all of this, it feels like I've read this a thousand times. Now, we talked about this last week, right? You guys with me? Anyone mm -hmm. with me? We talked about this last week, and remember, wh why did we speak about um, Esau's teeth on the back of his neck if we haven't read that yet? Or is that something we've already we read? We, we talked about it personally. We didn't talk about it here? We talked about it. We read the target personally. Okay, yes. We only read the That's the problem, part. guys. We get really confused on this stuff because we've read it so many times. It seems like we're just repeating on this stuff. Guys, let's talk about this a little bit before. This meeting right before Jacob and Esau came together, there was a lot of stuff before that, and we touched on it last week, that Yah had his messengers basically give Esau visions of enormous amounts of troops on the ground. So by the time that these two met each other and they're sitting here, both of them were completely freaked out about what their brother was going to do. And Esau was completely freaked out because he thought there were thousands of troops that were underneath the command of Jacob. And so he, he, nobody knew what in the world to expect with this. Okay, four. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the woman and, saw the woman and children and said, who are these with you? And he said, the children with whom Elohim has favored your servant. Then the female servant ca servants came near, they and their children and bowed themselves. And Leah also came near with her children and they bowed themselves. And Joseph and Rachel came near and they bowed themselves. Then Esau said, what do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, to find favor in the eyes of my master. Now, here's the thing, is Esau, Jacob didn't know about any of the company that was coming at the beginning, because I think that he was talking about, what do you mean by all this company which I met? I think it was the, the soldiers prior to right, this. Right, delivered him all this stuff. Yeah, the, 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 the ones that scared him. And he's like, what, where, what's, what's the deal with all of this stuff? And um, Jacob didn't know exactly what he saw because he had no idea that Yah had had the messengers messing with Esau to figure this out. So Jacob says to find favor in the eyes of my master. And that's the only thing he could probably figure out is he had no idea about the rest of it. Nine. 
But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Let what you have remain yours. And Jacob said, No, please, if I have now found favor in your eyes, then receive my present from my hand, because I have seen your face like seeing the face of Elohim, and you were pleased with me. Please, take my baraka that is brought to you, because Elohim has favored me, and because I have all. And he urged him, and he took it. Okay, do we need to go to the top yet? Andrew, uh, okay. Last one on the uh, scriptures at the bottom. And he said, let us depart and go. Let me go before you. Okay, now we're heading up to the top of this. For, the to for those who are just new to this, what this top part is, this is a, a translation called the Targums. And there's a, a ton of different Targums. And this is one particular one. Um, I don't know how many there are, but there, there's quite a bit. And it's just basically different... Um, things that you will find in here and like we always say when we find the bones we spit the bones and we chew on the meat and there's a lot of interesting new stuff that you learn in the targums from this okay here we go and jacob lifted up his eyes and looked and behold esau came and with him 400 men of war and he divided the children unto leah and to rachel and to the two concubines and placed the concubines and their sons foremost for he said if Esau come to destroy the children and abuse the women, he will do it with them. And meantime, we will rise and encounter him and fight. And Leah and her children after. And Rachel and Joseph after them. And he himself went over before them, praying and asking mercy before Yahuwah. And he bowed upon the earth seven times until he met his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell upon his neck and kissed him. And they wept. Esau wept on account of the pain of his teeth, which were shaken but Jacob wept because of the pain of his neck. Okay, now we're about to run into what you call um, Jewish uh, folklore. folklore, I believe. Now, does it tell a little further what's going on in no, this? No, it doesn't. Okay, so we didn't know what this was. How did we figure this part out? I looked it up. We didn't know what in the world this was talking about right here, right? Esau wept on account of the pain of his teeth, which were shaken. Eli, what did you find out when you actually researched this? So I looked it up, it was like in the Legends of the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> right, the Legends of the Jews. Uh, so it's like Esau was like afraid of uh, Jacob, but he still wanted to kill him. So he decided to go, and when they hugged, he was going to uh, bite his neck and suck his blood out. Bite his neck and suck his blood, right. But, but at the last moment, Jacob's neck turned to ivory and broke all of Esau's teeth. So that is, the, that is the legends of the Jews, or the, the, the <laughs> things of this nature, and this is why we spit out the bones. Because you don't hear of anything like this. And every once in a while in the Targums, they'll throw some stuff in here. What they're saying, right, he, what he said is that as they went to, to embrace each other, Esau tried to bite him in the neck, right? And then his neck turned to ivory, and so Esau was crying. So anyway, that, to me, it sounds like a little bit of uh, uh, folklore. Okay, anyone else? Sylvia says maybe their hugs were just too tight. Yeah, maybe it was a <laughs> real family, family thing. <laughs> okay, um... Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now, the Jerusalem is a secondary, another translation yet within translation. And so um, I don't want to get too confusing, but we'll read it anyway. And Esau ran to meet him, hugged him, and fell upon his neck and kissed him. Esau wept for the crushing of his teeth, and Jacob wept for the tenderness of his neck. Now, let's just say this did happen, right? Let's just say something did happen. If this dude, I think he would be kind of like broken teeth or something. You know, you, you go and bite something, all of a sudden you're biting into some rock. This would be a very interesting thing. Um, I don't know why, but let's continue on. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the wives and the children and said, Who are these with thee? And he said, They are the souls which have been given to me through mercy from Yahuwah, from before Yahuwah upon my servant. And the concubines came near, they and their children, and bowed themselves, and Leah also approached, and her children, and bowed. And afterward Joseph came near and stood before Rachel and hid her by his stature, and they bowed. And he said, what to thee is all this troop that I have met? And he said, it is a present I have sent to find mercy in the eyes of my Lord. And Esau said, I have much substance, my brother. Let what thou hast be confirmed to thee. And Jacob said, say not so, I beseech thee. If now I have found favor in thy eyes, accept my present from my, from my hand, because I have seen the look of thy face, and it is to me as the vision of the face of, of thy angel. For lo, thou art propitious to me. Receive now the present which is brought to thee, because it hath been given to me through the mercy before, from before Yahuwah, and because I have much substance. And he urged, he urged upon him, and he received. And he said, Let us journey and proceed, and I will go along with thee till thou come to the house of thy habitation. 
Okay. okay. Now, we are heading back to the bottom here. 13. But he said to him, My master knows that the children are weak, and the flocks and herds which are nursing are with me. And if the men should drive them hard one day, all the flocks will die, shall die. Please, let my master go before his servant, and let me lead on slowly according to the pace of the livestock that go before me, and according to the pace of the children, until I come to my master in Sire. And Esau said, Please let me leave with you some of my people who are with me. But he said, Why this? Let me find favor in the eyes of my master. Why do you think Esau said that? You think it's for protection? Why? Maybe, maybe you want to praise brother. And why? Why did Jacob say that? Why this? Let me find favor in the eyes of my master. Why did he? Why did he say? Did you think those guys were might go like cut his throat or something? Maybe like maybe they could have been like spies trying to figure out like uh, yeah what's like going on. Wait like, for this guy to go to sleep and he cut his throat or something. Or like trying to figure out why he had all those men that like uh, you saw like the troops. The yeah, angels, Esau knew why he had his troops, but he did not know why he had visions of Jacob having all those troops. Okay, sixteen. And Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. And Jacob departed to Sukkot and built himself a house and made booths for his livestock. That is why the name of the place is called Sukkot. And Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. Which, when he came from Padaram, he pitched his tent before the city. And he bought the portion of the field which he, pit, which he had pitched his tent from the children of Camor, Shechem's family, for 100th Kesetah. And he put an altar there, and he called it El Elroy, El El Elia, Yisrael. Okay, anyone know what the meaning of that is? No. El Oy Yisrael. This is El Elohai Yisrael. Elohai is what yours says. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that how you're spelling yours? Elohai on yours? E L. It's a E L O H E Y. Okay, got it. Okay, let's head up. Now we're heading Hold back. On. Before you go, um, says kiss to Jacob is written with scribbled dots over the word, and he has. And he kissed him. Traditional commentators suggest this hints to Esau's feelings or state of mind. Huh. So he was just maybe perturbed a little bit, and so they decided to, to add like a little uh, teeth of ivory thing or something, or teeth of, uh, what was it? His neck was. His neck turned ivory. Esau's neck turned... says there's a whole teaching on the kiss, way too much to post here. So. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's a crazy thing. Okay. Esau's picking his teeth up or something. Yeah, it's my need a dentist. Think or understand, he says. Probably not. Probably not. All right, let's head back up to where we, we are. We're just right there. And. Okay, now we're heading back up to the targets at the top. And he said to him, My Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and the flocks are giving milk are with me. And if I overdrive them one day, all the flock may die. Let me beseech my Lord to pass over and journey before thy servant, and I will lead, lead oil quietly alone. I don't know what that means. I think that's got to be a typo in this, whatever it is. I'm glad I'm not editing this. Um, I don't know. I will lead probably all quietly alone is what they're saying. According to the foot of the work, which is before me, and according to the foot of the instruction of the children, until the time that I come to my Lord at Gabla, Jerusalem post or Jerusalem translation says that the children are tender. Okay, continue on. And Esau said, let me now leave with thee some of the soldiers who are with me. But he said, why this? Let me find favor before thee, my Lord. And a miracle is wrought for Jacob, and that day Esau returned on his way to Gabla. Um, what do you guys make of that? And a miracle was wrought for Jacob that day. Was uh, it just because Esau I'm, left? Yeah, probably. He, so he, Esau didn't cut his throat and yep, take off? Probably. Okay. And Jacob journeyed to Sukkot, and journeyed there the 12 months of the year. And he builded it in mid Russia, and for his flocks he made booths. Therefore he called the name of the place Sukkot. Then came Jacob in peace with all that he had to the city of Shechem in the land of Canaan, in his coming from Pada Aram. And he dwelt near the city and bought the possession of a field where lie spread his tent from the hand of the sons of Hamor, Camor, father of Shechem, for a hundred pearls. That's interesting. I've never heard him pay for stuff in pearls before. And he raised there an altar, and there he gave the tithes which he had set apart of all that he had before Elohim, the Elohim of Yisrael. All right, um, why does this have a number four on this? Is this I don't know. I really don't know. It has a four, like, right and a here. three as well. A footnote yeah. or something? Yeah, there should be a footnote probably somewhere, but it's probably at the there very is, bottom. There is, but I don't think you can see it in this one. But... Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what that means either on that. Okay, um, how many chapters, verses are the next one? 34? Mm -hmm. 31. 31. Did you want to do it's up to you. two of those on it? What no, do we have? What? I didn't proofread the target uh, 34. Proofread? That's okay. Um, what should we do? How's the chat room there? All right, Let, let's roll it. Let's roll it. If you guys are there for us, if you guys are uh, want to do another one, let's just do another. We have uh, some time. We have no place to go. It's a Shabbat. And so uh, let us go into chapter 34, if you guys are all there. Okay, let us roll. 
And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And Shechem, son of Camor, the Kittite, prince of the land, saw her and took her and lay with her and humbled her. And his being clung to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the girl and spoke kindly to the girl. All right, do we need to have a, um, uh, what, what, how old is this girl? 12. 12 years old. So for everybody who did not know, um, this, like, I don't know, a king or a uh, ruler of prince, this, prince. prince of this little city, um, just stole a 12-year-old girl. Okay. And then he wants to take her for a wife. Five. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob kept silent until they came. Who, who, who could do that? Who among us, who amongst us could have one of our own defiled and not say a word? No, I, would, I would have probably gotten rage. I would have yeah. probably grabbed everyone and been like, yeah, that, take that, out. My immediate thought would be to go grab the girl, whatever it took to go get the girl out of there and to, to take care of business. Um, that's what my thought would have been. I don't know if Jacob is a really patient or like we should not take that as an example. Yeah, we, well, I mean, here's the thing is these guys are far more worthy of anything of looking at Yaz than me, right? What they are doing is an examples of how our forefathers probably should have done this, right? And Abraham was unlike any other person that we ever knew, right? Yah loved him. Yah loved Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, you know, these people are very, very close to our creator. And so, um, however it went down, um, let's see here how it goes down. Okay, six. Um, six. And Camor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very wroth because he had done a senseless deed in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, which should not be done. Now, because we are uh, Bible editors, I guess, and that's a label that we now have, we get a ton of stories and a ton of this stuff that goes on and on and on. And after literally there's 153,000 words in the book of Jasher. And I know that because I've, I've pasted every single one of them in by hand. And what I can say from reading the book of Jasher is that the sons of, basically the sons of Yisrael, they're wild, they're woolly, they're renegades, and um, they, it, they're, they're just wild. They're extremely wild. So this situation right here, knowing that these kids are as wild as they are, and them not picking up their weapons right here and going to kill them all is very interesting. It's a very interesting situation. Okay. Okay. Now we're heading back up to the Targums at the top. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she bare to Jacob, went forth to see the manners of the daughters of the print people of the land and Shechem. And the son of Camor, the Hivite, prince of the land, saw her and took her by force and lay with her and afflicted her. And his soul delighted in Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the girl. And he spake kindly to the heart of the girl. And Shechem spake to Camor, his father, saying, Take for me this damsel to wife. But Jacob had heard that he had polluted Dinah, his daughter, and his sons were in the flocks in the field. And Jacob was silent until they came. Thoughts? Anything on this? Anything more? Uh, um, man, I would, I would have gone, got everyone, taken the girl, and come back and just started like, beating them up for that. It's very interesting. Yeah, this is one of these situations. I mean, at a, we're, we're in a world where... You know, 12 year olds, 10 year olds, that is pedophilia, right? I mean, that is that is the world of that you would look at and that this guy's a pedophile. Um, but, you know, we also have other instances of uh, how old is Jacob's wife? 10. 10. No, she, you mean Isaac's wife? Isaac's wife. Yeah, Isaac's wife. She was 10 years old. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. This is These are just odd, odd stories. Let's, okay, back to the top. And Camor, the father of Shechem, came forth to Jacob to speak with him. He's a very bold fellow. And the sons of Jacob had come up from the field when they heard. And the men were indigent and very violently moved, because Shechem had wrought dishonor in Israel in lying with the daughter of Jacob, for it was not right to have been done. And again, I'm telling you guys, because I have a lot of experience in the book of Jasher, just these guys not picking up their swords and flaying this fellow right here is, is amazing, right? There is, there's, these guys have, like, they, they've done far worse and uh, for far less, it seems. They're about like, to. Yeah. Drake says they're warriors. Yeah, they're absolute warriors. They're killers, killing machines. Okay. Eight. Eight. But Camor spoke with them, saying, My son Shechem's being longs for your daughter. Please give her to him for a wife. Now, this is like doing the deed and then coming and asking for permission. And some people say it's easier to get permission, it's easier to be granted forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. Except bad things are going to happen here. And, you know, this is probably one of these situations oh, that is not true. Part of this is actually a Leia's fault. I don't know. 
Uh, How so? Because when all the dudes were out uh, doing the flock, Jacob was at home. Uh, Leia took the daughter out to go with the Gentiles, good like a party yep. thing. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, they all and went. So they wanted the to dance with the women. Saw her and like basically kidnapped her and ran yep. away, and Leia just went home. I well, guess. And that is the thing that we are told to stay away from Gentiles. We're, we're we're told to stay away from the world. We are not to participate in them. We are not to get near them. We are not. We're not supposed to associate with them. And um, you know, there was a good question. I think somebody had a question, or I think it was in Telegram. They were talking about. Um, things of, do you allow your kids to go into like a Christian school where they have like a, a little church thing inside a Christian school? And there's nothing in Torah that ever tells us to relinquish our kids to some government agent, right? There's never, ever been a condition. And we, we have a couple of things where, you know, um, I think Jacob went off to see Shem, but we don't have any kind of things where you go and you take your kids and you put them in a school and you let the government administer them, Right. And so there's, um, where was I going with this? Uh, oh, she was going. Gentiles. Oh, yeah. So as far as like allowing your kids to be part of this or allowing your kids to be any, it's not a good idea, right? It, even those birthday parties that, you know, we don't celebrate birthday parties or anything like that, but you start celebrating birthday parties with the pagans and, and all of a sudden your kids are like, well, let's celebrate birthday parties. And we're like, well, there's nothing in the Torah that tells us two at any time that we've ever seen people celebrating birthdays in the bible somebody dies somebody some roofs fall on people and people get their heads cut off all sorts of stuff all right continue on um eight uh no you're on nine i think you're on ten. Nine. Nine. nine and intermarry with us give us your daughters and take your daughters for yourselves and dwell with us and let the land be before you dwell and move in and about it and have possession in it and shechem said to her father and shechem said to her father and her brothers should it be? Is it Shechem? No, uh, it's saying like to Dinah's dad. Okay. Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me, I give. Ask of me a bride price and gift ever so high, and I give according to what you say to me, but give me the girl for a wife. Now, this is it's everything delayed. about this is completely against Torah, right? This is uh, number one, these guys are not circumcised. They are not part of, they're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. They went and they defiled the girl. And in literally in Yisrael, that's unheard of. You know what, what's about to happen to these people? Um, kind of deserved. Is kind of deserved. Okay, thirteen. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Camor, his father, and spoke with deceit, because he had defiled Dinah, their sister. Now again, this is amazing that these guys were able to plot what they're about to do, and instead of just grabbing knives and killing these people, that it, it appeared they were in their hands. They could have killed the father. They could have killed the kid. This is, uh, it's going to get, a, a the killing's about to happen, right? 14. And they said to them, we are not able to do this matter, to give our sister to the one who's uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. Only on this would we agree to you. If you become as we are, to have every male of you circumcised, then we shall give our daughters to you and take your daughters to us, and we shall dwell with you and shall become one people. But if you do not listen to us and become, be circumcised, we shall take our daughter and go. And their words, please, Camor and Shechem, Camor's son. Okay, here we go. So these guys are like really gullible. These guys are like Camor and Shechem are extremely gullible people. Okay, now we're back to the targets at the top. And Hamor spake with them, saying, The soul of Shechem, my son, delighteth in your daughter. Give her, I pray, to him to wife, and conjoin yourselves by marriage with us. I'm still blown away that these people come and ask for permission later like the like it hasn't already been like it hasn't though the damage hasn't been done i mean that's that's the thing um it's just it's just crazy they are really brave people extremely brave yeah okay give your daughters to us and take our daughters to you and dwell with us and the land shall be before you to dwell where you please and do business in it and possess it and shechem said to her father and to her brother why does it say that and shechem said to her father Jacob. Talking to Jacob. Dad. It still says it weird, though. Both the verse translations said it. Okay. Said to her father and to her brother, let me find grace in your sight, and what you shall tell me I will give. Multiply upon me great, greatly dowry and gift, and I will give as you shall tell me. Only give me the damsel, the wife. And the other version says, uh, I don't even know what it says. It says dotation and marriage portion. I don't even know what dotation is. So okay. I, knowing this translation, it could be a no, not a word at all. Okay, net continue on. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Camor his father with subtility and to spake because he had polluted Dinah their sister and said to him, them, we cannot do this thing to give our sister to a man who's uncircumcised because that would be a disgrace to us. 
But in this, we would accede to you. If you will be as we are by circumcising every male, and we will give our daughters to you, and we'll take your daughters to us and dwell with you and be one people. But if you will not hearken to us to be circumcised, we will take our daughter by force. Uh, oh, I lost my place. By force and we'll go. And their words were pleasing in the eyes of uh, Hamor and in the eyes of Shechem, the son, the son of Hamor. Okay. Now we're heading back to the bottom thing here. Things are about to get a little, a little wild here. And the young man did not delay to do this because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. Now he was more respected than all the household of his father. And Camor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with all the men of the city, saying, These men are at peace with us, so let them dwell in the land and move about in it. And see, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters for us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only, only on this would the men agree to dwell with us, to be one people, if every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised. Okay. Yeah, they definitely these, vote freely about the land. These people have no idea what circumcision is, right? They, they have no idea. This guy's out there. Hey, let's go get circumcised. You, they'll come and you'll have a, women and it'll be really, really great, right? So they had no idea what this was even about. Okay, continuing on. Their herds and their possessions and all their beasts, should they not be ours? Only let us agree with them and let them dwell with us. And all who went out of the gate of his city listened to Camor and Shechem, his son. Every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gate of a city. Now, I don't know what kind of persuasion power these people had that they got every one of these guys to, I don't know, line up and do the old sippity snip. And um, that's amazing. That is amazing that you can convince an entire city. I, I, I'm just saying, this, this, don't, don't, don't laugh here, guys. I'm just saying, doesn't it sound amazing? It's like you guys trying to go into a, a town and trying to get the town. Hey, look, we'll be, move all these beautiful women in here. You guys I mean, will get the cows. King, they kind of had to. Yeah, well, they didn't have to. Nobody had to do that. I mean, the king you probably... You, you know the story afterwards of the other guys, right? We'll, we'll keep that one for later. Okay, 25. Um, and it came to be on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Shimon and Louis, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. Okay, so we're in third day, third day after this. Um, you're hobbling around. It's not a good deal. Not a good day. And all of a sudden... Um, all of the tough guys of your city are not so tough anymore. Um, the, the last thing you really want to do is raise a sword up uh, to defend yourself at this state. And this is, this is the interesting part. Did the entire city deserve this? Or did it, what did, they, did it belong to Shechem and his father and that line? Should have they wiped out the whole, his whole family? Well, or should have they put this to the city? Well, why? They why had, they, they had to put it to the city? Why did they put it to the city? Because if they just kill Shechem and Kamor, the whole city would come after them, and they'd be like, "Oh, do you kill our king? We now avenge our avenge our king." So like, kill everyone, and then there's nobody to avenge them. Yeah, maybe. A couple of things also. We know that Reuben is more level head. I don't know how many brothers knew about this, but this is uh, Dinah is like straight up the full sister of Levi and Shimon. So basically, they're going to be angry than the rest of whatever Joseph yep. and Itzkar and the others. Um, but Judah's around. Judah's also a full sibling with them, and so is Reuben. But we know Reuben's a little more level-headed, so he probably wouldn't. Well, we go. we know all the brothers get in on this. I mean, they, they all. We don't know who. Uh, we don't know at this point who actually knew, but we do know at the well, end. How big the city? This is. is kind of where everything starts going downhill. I'm oh, it goes. Yeah, yeah the, the whole country goes downhill because of this. Well, okay. it says Yah was their persuasion power. Yeah, and that that's uh, you know that's the thing about Yah, is you don't want to war with him. You don't want to battle him. You do not want his curses because he will do things that you have no idea. And it doesn't, it's not like a, a blast of something that you'll see. It's little things and your entire life will be changed. And, you know, it's just, you don't mess with Yah. And Dreg also says, out of respect or fear, move people to do things they normally wouldn't. Yeah, out of respect and fear. You know, one of the things was he, he said, you're going to move the women in, right? We, you dine with the women. And then he's like, well, all their cows and stuff, those shall all be ours too, right? And so there's some... Some uh, greed along with all of this, but, you know, here we go. Okay, where are we at, Eli? Oh. Uh, you're still on blow. Okay, 27. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their flocks and their herds and their donkeys and that which was in the city and that which was in the field. And all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives and they all, they took captive and they plundered all that was in the houses. And Jacob said to Shimon and Louis, you have troubled me by making me a stench among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and I am few in number. They shall gather themselves against me and shall smite me, and I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, 
Should he treat our sister like a whore? And that was the <laughs> so conversation. This, is, this gives you a lot of the understanding and thinking of Jakob, right? Because he's like, you just went and killed the entire city. We're very small. All these people are going to come across. They're going to wipe us out, right? So, you know, that was probably his thinking. And whether or not, um, you know, when he was in the field to begin with, where, you know, all of us would have like, well, let's get our swords and let's do this. Obviously, Yah had a plan on this that he wanted the entire city of Shechem taken out. Now, I don't think this, I don't think we'll, we'll figure this out in Genesis, but for those who have not read the extracurricular books, this begins a war that Jacob and the, the kids of Jacob, they go and they slaughter like seven or eight different towns. Country. Yeah, towns. By the time they're done with this, they're at war with everybody, like seven different kings. They've, they've, there's uh, one of the places they killed, they, they bled everyone out. All they could see was blood coming from the city out. These kids go on a rampage after this. It, it doesn't just end like this. They go on a complete rampage and they, they level everything. And you don't understand when you don't read the extracurricular books, but when you read them, you understand that these children of Jacob have superhero powers. I don't know how other way to say this other than they are not normal human beings. Um, one of them, like Simeon, has a, a shriek. Like when he screams, it shakes things. The land shakes, people freak out. Um, Yahuda can pick up rocks that are bigger than anything and just throw them. These kids have superhero powers. And so that is, I guess, the power that our creator has is that we're never alone. And probably if we ever needed to call upon any of these kind of things and we needed them, our creator would save us in that same kind of fashion. And so uh, let's continue on. Let's head up back up to the targums at the top. Where are we at, Eli? All right, so... There. And their words were pleasing in the eyes of Camor, in the eyes of Shechem, the son of Camor. And the young man delayed not to do this thing because he wished for the daughter of Jacob. And he was more honorable than all his father's house. And Camor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spake with the men of the gate of their city, saying, These men are friendly with us, and they may well dwell in the land and do business within it. And the land, behold, it is broad, broad in limits before them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives and give our daughters to them. But in this only will the men accede to us, to dwell with us, and to be one people, by every male of us being circumcised as they are. Their flocks and their substance and all their cattle, will they not be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. And all they who came out of the gate of the city received from Camor and from Shechem, his son. And they circumcised every male and all who came out from the, city, the gate of the city. And it was on the third day. When they were weak from the pain of their circumcision, two of the sons of Jacob, Shimon and Levi, two of the sons of Jacob, Shimon and Levi, the brothers of Dinah, took each man his sword and came upon the city, which was dwelling securely, and killed every male. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, they killed with the edge of the sword. And they took Dinah from the house of Shechem and went forth. And the rest of the sons of Jacob came to the spoil of the slain. And they sacked the city because they had polluted their sister in the midst of it. Their flocks and oxen and donkeys and whatever was in the city or in the field, they spoiled. And all their wealth and all their little ones, they took and spoiled and all that was in the houses. And Jacob said to Shimon and Levi, you have made my name to go forth as evil among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and Fezerites. And I am a people of, a, of small number and they will gather together against me and destroy me and the men of my house. And Shimon and Le Levi answered, it would not have been fit to be said in the congregation of Israel that the uncircumcised polluted the virgin and the worshipers of idols debased the daughter of Jacob. But it is fit that it should be said the uncircumcised were slain on account of the virgin and the worshipers of idols on account of the daughter of Jacob. Shechem bar Hamor will not, will not now deride us with his words. For as a whorish woman and an outcast who hath no avenger would he have made our sister if we had not done this thing. The other translation says, the two sons of Jacob answered together and said to Israel, their father, it would not have been fit to be said in the congregation of Israel in their house of instruction that the uncircumcised polluted the virgin and that the worshipers of idols, the daughters of Jacob, but it is fit that it is said in the congregations of Israel and in their house of instruction that the uncircumcised were put to death for the sake of the virgin and the worshipers of idols became because they had defiled Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And Shechem bar Hamor will not boast in his heart and say, as a, as a woman who hath no man to avenge her injury, so had Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, been made. And they said, as an impure woman and an outcast, would he have accounted our sister. Okay. All right. Well, I think that is it. Um, you got anything going on in the uh, chat room? What you got? Somebody, I don't know Hebrew, so I can't tell you what his name is, but it says, Jasher is not scripture. 
Why not? Glenn says correct, but it still reads good for additional clarification. But isn't it mentioned in a couple verses? In it's the mentioned all over. It's mentioned, yeah. So for those who do not think Jasher is scripture, you better reread your scriptures. You need to look at this stuff. And you look, I, I've gone through Jasher so many times now. It is it is almost exactly like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You have a ton of extra stuff in there. In fact, you have about 140,000 more words than you do somewhere else. But it is absolutely without a shadow of doubt scripture. I will always say that to the very end. Do you find things that do not completely jive? Are there certain things? Yes, you will find that in all scriptures. You find that everywhere from the beginning of the book to the end. And we are 6,000 years beyond when creation was, right? We are, we, these people have polluted our scriptures. They've taken our, our books out. You can look at the books of the Nazarene, right? You, we have words of our Messiah that nobody has ever even heard before because they've ripped every doctrine out. Right, and it is up to us to figure out what is good and what is wrong. And anyone that says that it is not doctrine, I will totally argue with you, and I will say it is doctrine. And you need to take all of the doctrine, you need to apply it to your lives. If there was something inside Jasher that said, well, go ahead and worship idols, or go ahead and uh, look at your family naked, or we're gonna rewrite the Torah, it doesn't do that. All it does is it gives you completely different details. And I will argue with anybody who says it's not, it's not doctrine, it is doctrine, and you need to apply it. And if you don't think it's doctrine, you know, stick with the Torah, but it's it's the same stuff. So I mean, Joshua says uh, it's not written in the book of Joshua and Psalms, same thing. Yeah, it, it's all scripture. It's all over there, right? Together, we have all of the books that we need, and it's up to you guys out there to study this stuff to find out if it is doctrine. But as far as my opinion, Jasher is doctrine. It is part of it. It doesn't have anything outside of Torah. It doesn't have anything bad. Um, and it gives you a lot more details, stuff you would never, ever, ever know. The same for Jubilees. I believe Jubilees is completely doctrine, and it is a perfect historical account of what is going on. And again, you'll find minute details here and there that somebody along the way has either left out or done something to. But as far as what is scriptures for us, I believe all of those books are scriptures. Okay. Um, anyone else have anything? Eli, let's find our last goodbye song here. All right. If, if nobody Wait, else has... Numbers with a, um... Oh. Ironic blessing. Oh, yeah. So go ahead. Let's hit it with the ironic blessing, if you will. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aaron and to his son, saying, On this why you shall bless your son Yashrael, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yashrael, and I will bless them. Okay. All right, guys, we love you guys very, very much. We thank you, everybody who sat and listened to this or everyone in the future. We hope that you guys enjoy this and you find something out of it. We hope that you seek our creator and his, his son. There's no greater journey in our life than our creator and his son. And it is with that we will leave you guys. Have a good day.
right. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We love you. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine upon you. May you find his grace. May you find the glory of the Torah and forever the light of the sun. We love you all. Have a wonderful day, guys. Shalom. Shalom.